Ostensibly a parable, as told by Jesus in the Gospels, is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. More accurately, the parables of Jesus make use of everyday situations in order to draw an analogy between the story and an aspect of the kingdom of God. In other words, something in the story is like something in the kingdom. While it was given for the disciples to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, the parables seem to conceal the truth to those on the outside. Jesus tells his disciples, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is in parables. Early in his ministry, Jesus taught the people plainly, making propositional statements. Later in his ministry, however, he began to teach them in parables. Why did Jesus begin teaching them in parables? The answer might surprise you. Stick around and I will show you the actual reason why Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus reveals his reasons for speaking to the people in parables. His apology is found in all three synoptic Gospels, Matthew chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. Jesus asserts that the mystery of the kingdom of God was given to the disciples, but those outside his small group of followers get everything in parables. The reason for this, he says, is found in the prophet Isaiah, and he quotes a portion of that passage. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see, and while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. They get everything in parables, so that while seeing they may see and not perceive, and while hearing they may hear and not understand. Otherwise they might return and be forgiven. When I first heard this explanation, I understood Jesus to say, I speak to you plainly because the Father has granted that the disciples alone were to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But I speak to the people in parables because the Father has granted that the people should remain in the dark, unable to understand. I no longer think Jesus meant this quite the way it sounds. In Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, he tells the church that knowing the will of God is a blessing that all the saints share in common. The apostles were given to know the mysteries, but it was their gift and calling to relay that information to the rest of us. The Father doesn't want his people to remain in the dark. In order to understand why Jesus began telling stories rather than preaching with propositional statements, we should define what parables are and how Jesus is using them. What is a parable? The word parable comes from the Greek word parabole, which connotes juxtaposition, comparison. Visualize two things moving side by side together. A parable places two ideas side by side for comparison, forming an analogy. The one using a parable is saying, this story is similar in some aspect to the point I want to make. The parables of Jesus are intended to highlight and illustrate very important and significant aspects of the kingdom of God. For instance, Jesus begins the parable of the sower this way. The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. Where Jesus intends to draw a comparison between the kingdom of God and a man sowing seed. Unlike other parables, however, Jesus' parables are uniquely one-sided. When Jesus tells a parable, he gives one side of the analogy without giving the other half of the analogy. Those who hear the parable are left to provide the other half of the analogy themselves. Jesus' parables are like riddles 
in that, like a riddle, solving a one-sided parable requires ingenuity and an advanced knowledge of the subject. A story appeals to the imagination of those who hear, but it leaves them wondering what the story was about. Those who hear Jesus' parables don't immediately get the point. Although the Father granted knowledge and understanding of the kingdom of God to the disciples, they didn't understand Jesus' parables either. Peter and the other disciples often asked Jesus to explain the parable. At some point in Jesus' ministry, he did not speak to the people without a parable, but he was explaining everything privately to his own disciples. This is why I say that understanding Jesus' parables requires an advanced knowledge of the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't teach in parables in order to make it easier to understand. I disagree with those who suggest that Jesus' purpose was to share religious truths in order that those who heard them might immediately grasp the concepts being presented. The parables are intentionally one-sided and need to be explained. Jesus didn't always teach in parables. He didn't use a parable in the Sermon on the Mount, for instance. He began to teach them in parables much later in his ministry. It had become apparent to Jesus that the prophecy of Isaiah was being fulfilled, which says, You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. Jesus understood that the more truth he revealed to his people, the more they would come under judgment for unbelief. In a sense, speaking to his people using one-sided analogies was both an act of judgment and an act of mercy. Judgment because his people proved themselves unworthy of the gospel. Mercy because further teaching would only increase their culpability. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Here we have two or three clues that help us understand why Jesus teaches the people in parables. First of all, notice what Jesus said about his disciples in verse 10. To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. Compare that with what he said later. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Jesus reveals to his disciples, soon to be apostles, that God himself decides who will know the mysteries of the kingdom. These men are granted to know the mysteries. The people are not granted to know them. Somehow this is related to the fact that the disciples have been given eyes to see and ears to hear. On the one hand, the disciples have eyes to see. On the other hand, the eyes of the people have grown dim and their ears have grown dull. Apparently, before anyone can understand the mysteries of the kingdom, God must provide the prerequisite healing of the eyes and ears. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, and nor do they understand. Earlier, I argued that since Jesus' parables were one-sided analogies, one must already have an advanced knowledge of the kingdom of God before the story can have its full impact. For whoever has advanced knowledge of the kingdom of God will be given more knowledge. In order to learn something, one must already know something basic. New learning is constructed on prior knowledge. The more we know about the kingdom of God, the more Jesus and the Holy Spirit can engage our prior knowledge to teach us something new. 
For whoever has some prior knowledge of the kingdom, to him more knowledge of the kingdom shall be given. Jesus is the primary source of that knowledge, and he taught his disciples. These men were given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. We learn these mysteries from them. Jesus taught them, and they teach us. Only those who have been taught by Jesus directly or indirectly by his apostles are prepared and ready to engage with the parables. Finally, we all know that direct communication is superior to indirect communication. We are taught to be ashamed if we don't say exactly what we mean all the time. But sometimes we use indirect forms of communication to overcome cultural barriers to truth. Most every culture in the world can relate to a farming analogy. Therefore, as a side benefit, Jesus' parables engage those from other areas in the world in the mysteries of the kingdom. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful to your own studies. If you did, please click thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.